Hello and welcome everyone to another StarCraft 2 England cast and today I have got a game between Tristan and Olive. Now the game is going to be played on GSL Daybreak and in the top position, top right position, we have got Tristan playing as the Red Zerg and in the bottom right position we have got Olive playing as the Blue Terran player. Now this is a really really cool map, it is as I said GSL Daybreak. You've got quite a long rush distance in order to get to your opponent's base made longer by the fact that there are some rocks in the middle of the map which can be taken out later in the game to give a shortcut. The watchtowers give great vision of every access point to your base so holding these are very very important. There's also this open ground behind the base so drops and airplay can be very very effective. Now this game was played on the Korean ladder so it is too top players both can be playing very well Tristan actually going for the extractor trick to get up to 11 and again there doesn't seem, really seem to be a purpose for him doing that um, he already had his overlord on the way so it seems it was more just a misclick up to 10 drones because it has been proved on team liquid that taking 10 drones before the overlord is actually less economically viable than getting the overlord at 9 unless you're going for some kind of super fast pull but it doesn't appear to be as Tristan is already up to 15 supply so we'll probably be going for the hatch first meanwhile Olive just going for a very very standard play the barracks on the high ground no super greedy things anywhere and this drone is coming down so I'd almost guarantee the Tristan is going to take this hatch so we probably will see a hatch first build come out for Tristan now which is very very standard against a Terran player and this isn't standard by Olive just flicking down to have a look at the SCV we'll see he's throwing down a proxy racks so this is going to be a two racks opener won't be scouted because the drone has gone the other way around so he will just see this fairly standard build may get in the base and we'll see the no gas have been taken so maybe slightly suspicious but I mean it could just be a late gas and without seeing the other barracks in the base at all he will have to go and scout to see exactly what is going on meanwhile this SCV is going out to scout and probably chuck down a bunker just to bunker up this base two barracks will mean a lot of marines coming out very very quickly apologize for the misclick there again I still need to get my keyboard fixed so badly or at least just buy a new one. Now this SCV is going to come down. Probably will scout through the base. This pool only about a third of the way done as we speak for Tristan. So Zerglings aren't going to be out for a long, long time. And this SCV is going to come in. And it's going to go and scout in the base. We'll get spotted by that overlord. The bunker is on its way down. And straight away Tristan pulling a lot of drones. But there's already some marines on the way. Um, for Olive. A second SCV as well coming in and a good surround there on that SCV but doesn't manage to get the kill the bunker is going to go down and will get cancelled so again just delaying it a little while but eight zerglings are coming out now obviously Olive has given away that he is going to be bunker rushing so Tristan's going to have to do something impressive in order to defend this because obviously that second barracks being closer is very effective and a second bunker coming down as well now so Again, this could be a bit of an issue for Tristan. He's going to have to get those Zerglings out. I'm pulling all of the drones. Just going to try and get a surround on the Marines. A lot of Zerglings have been forced to be built, though. And these Zerglings are going to try and get around the Marines. But great start to step micro by Olive. Just picking off a couple. One Marine will go down. But more Marines are coming in. And, I mean, more Zerglings are going to have to be built by Tristan. If we take a back, look back here, both SCVs have been taken down. So those bunkers aren't going to finish. So... Tristan's defended this absolutely amazingly, but he has lost a lot of units and being forced to make a lot more Zerglings. And, I mean, every Zergling you make is one less drone that you get early on. And that's really the aim Olive is going for here. And just still making Marines, but pulling them back because those bunkers have been cancelled and won't be able to get down again because of the creep spread. So... Straight away, Tristan does have a lot of Zerglings. He's got a counter-attack. May actually force a cancel on this command center, depending on whether this bunker d does get down in time. But, I mean, this is where that super long rust distance will be beneficial for Olive, because that bunker should finish. He's got quite a few Marines there, and there's just not enough Zerglings in order to deal with that. Behind this, Tristan is just going for his speed. His natural base is starting to get saturated, just droning up, getting another queen out because he has only got that one queen at the moment. And that barracks is still in the forward position, but will have to be lifted and moved soon. But a lot of marines here, so Tristan won't be able to go in with this attack. Doesn't quite manage to pick off that marine. And, I mean, he's not going to be able to go forward with this. And, obviously, the longer he goes without doing damage with these zerglings, the less likely he will actually be able to use them effectively and compensate for the loss of income he's got because of 
being forced to build them. Now, this second queen is on its way down now for Tristan. Meanwhile, his natural base is pretty much saturated. Just two more drones there. Only got the one gas still, though, and nothing mining out of this gas, so... Tristan is going to have to start pumping Zerglings as he is. He's got 10 more on the way. He's already got quite a big ball of them for this stage of the game. But, I mean, this complete wall off is going to be finished extremely soon for Olive if he wants to. But he doesn't actually have any vision. So, he doesn't have this watchtower or the other watchtower. So, he has no idea what Tristan is doing. Tristan just pumping out more Zerglings. Just getting this big, big ball. But, no gas being taken at all yet for Tristan. He's just going completely all in with Zerglings. And... I mean, without Banelings, he's going to struggle to get through this wall with so many Marines behind there. Just pumping out more and more Marines. Olive also getting his third command center up and a factory. So, going back into fairly standard play here, getting more bunkers up. So, he is expecting some kind of push. These Marines, though, will be able to hold off that Zergling pressure on the front because the wall off is there. He's got bunkers behind. And here comes the Zerglings. There are quite a lot there. We take a look at the unit counting tab. 44 Zerglings are on the way. Only 32 drones. So, I actually think... That if we take a look, yeah, not a good lead in drones for Tristan. He is supply blocked as well, waiting for those overlords to finish. And now all the marines are there, and the Zerglings are just going to go for it. They're going to be forced back, though. There's just so many marines there, and Tristan wisely taking out these rocks just so he won't get caught in a choke later on. And it is just forcing Olive to stay in a very, very turtled up position, which isn't actually too bad for him because he is on equal basis, has got that third command center, so we'll be able to keep up with Tristan in terms of worker production and really once he gets saturated on two bases there's a lot a Terran player can do there meanwhile we have got macro hatch on its way out for Tristan as well so surprisingly he isn't taking his third base at either position yet and he would have been safe to do so because from this position you can see how heavily invested in defense Olive is he's not going to be moving out anytime soon meanwhile he has got siege mode on the way from this factory getting out the double engineering base so double upgrades will be coming down and Tristan now just taking his second, third, and fourth gas. That macro hatch will be finishing up pretty soon. And he's taking all of his gases and getting a single evolution chamber. So only getting single upgrade will probably be carapace just for the extra armor against the tanks. But again, it may be plus one attack. It depends whether Tristan really wants to go for this or not. And I mean, if we take a look at the units tab, he is only two ahead in drones. And the fact that mules play such... He's actually now behind in drones. Two... Olive, who does have more workers, and obviously the mules as well. And those three command centers mean that Olive's income is going to be quite a lot above that of Tristan. Just getting more barracks added in here. Only one factory. That tank is positioned quite nicely. The baling nest is on its way now as well for Tristan. Also getting his lair up, so we'll be able to baling bus soon. But obviously, there's just so many marines. Only one bunk now, but this tank on the high ground is in a very, very good position. And we'll be able to cover that wall off nearly completely from Zerglings. And we are actually getting the plus one melee attack upgrade for Tristan rather than the armor. Again, he's just wanting to do maximum damage with those Zerglings, but obviously means he will take a lot more fire from tanks. Having said that, it's a good move to make. You do actually do very well against Marines with the plus one melee attack. Spire going up for Tristan as well now. Now, Spire will be quite effective because there aren't actually any missile turrets up as of yet. But, I mean, they can be got up quite quickly and, I mean... Tristan's got a lot of gas saved up, so he can get a lot of mutilisks out very, very quickly. Plus one is about a quarter done. Not getting the bailing speed. There are quite a few bailings morphing just defensively here. And this third base, which is trying to go down, will actually stay up because there's just so many tanks there. The front is defended nicely, and this is great play by Olive. He's going to get that command center down, which he pre-built in his main. Actually getting a fourth command center as well, so he's going to be just going pure economic build here getting so much income and there is also an armory on its way down somewhere um trying to just spot that there's the armory so we will see the tank weapon upgrades very very shortly getting the missile turrets out as well getting more reactors on the barracks but meanwhile tristan just double expanding behind this and this is exactly what he needs to do he needs to get more expansions out because at the moment he's a base behind and that's never a position you want to be in as a zerg player you always want to be a base in front if anything these tanks are in great positions gonna be able to defend this third base with that bunker very very easily and if we take a look a lot of mutilisks are coming out now as well as the plus one air attack this zergling just poking around seeing what you can see great creep spread by tristan here just really covering the map 
steadily from these double creep tumors will allow him to keep vision most importantly but also give him increased move speed and plus two attack coming down now and this does surprise me i'm surprised he didn't actually go for the armor upgrade because obviously that would make him a lot more effective against those tanks and since olive is going for such a defensive position that's what he needs to be able to deal with is are those tanks but these mutilists coming in they will get probably pushed back by those marines but are going to snipe out the tank first no mutilists do go down and this is just good play, just every single tank you do snipe can be very, very effective. And these mutilists are just going to come around. There is a turret there, but I think there's enough mutilists if he did want to take it, but he doesn't. He's just going to pull back and play it safe, wait for those mutilists numbers to get even higher. A drop did try and go down there, but Tristan just straight on it, but at nothing here to defend. So he's going to have to pull those down. A couple of drones will die, and this is just great harassment, but a few marines are going to go down as well. Um, that drop is going to get pretty much cleaned up now. The Mutalists do take out the dropship as well, so nothing more is going to happen there. Meanwhile, a big push coming out for Olive. A couple of tanks, quite a few marines, but he's still pretty much staying defensive, getting more tanks following up on this push as well. Going to take his fourth base. Now, this is a brave move to make. Taking that fourth base is a very forward position. The rocks are still up though, so that makes it slightly easier to to defend but the mutilists are coming in but there's so many marines there they do manage to pick off one of the watchtower but the watchtower will obviously still stay in position for olive meanwhile tristan has got his four bases up but i mean against olive's three plus he's getting another command center hasn't built another one in his main so it's only five command centers on four bases against five hatcheries and four bases for Tristan which isn't a good position for the Zerg player but meanwhile Tristan has just got so much stuff coming up he's got the bailing speed on the way he's also got burrow coming up plus two air attack and plus two melee attack is going to be finishing up soon and Olive is just going to lose a couple of marines to this mutualist flock but having said that I mean He's doing great. He's getting that Thor up, and that Thor will deal great with the Mutalisks along with the Marines. Got a sensor tower here just to know exactly where those Mutalisks are and what they're doing. And that's really great map control. That sensor tower will help Olive exceptionally in order to do this. And I apologize for someone coming up and posting me messages. Forgot to set myself to busy, but... Hopefully they'll go away quickly. Um, if we take a look here, a drop is going to go down, but it will get cleaned up by these mutilisks. And the dropship will also go down. It doesn't actually manage to do much damage. If we take a look at the workers killed, we've owned 24 workers killed by Olive. So absolutely great to hardly any killed by Tristan. Tristan is approaching Max though, and he's got a lot of banings, a lot of zergings, and a lot of muters. Now these center rocks are going down. Those mutilisks are quickly going to pull back. See the two Thors there. Those mutilisks can't bunch up, or they will flat out get killed. And, I mean, there's just so many Marines pushing forward now that I mean, this is a great position. The tanks are sieged up, and this fourth base of Tristan is going to come under a heavy amount of fire. The Lings, Banelings, and Muters all positioning themselves up. A great forward scan knows exactly what's there, and trying to move forward, but the tanks are sieged up. So, going to take huge damage. Obviously, the tanks do have the weapon upgrade. The Marines just pulling back away from those Banelings, but there's just so much stuff for Tristan. And it's all going to melt down for Olive. He's got absolutely no army left, really. And this fourth base for Olive is going to go down. Tristan doing a great amount of damage. Just had too much stuff. That command center will die to those Mutalisks. And just going straight into the third base. Only one tank in a bunker. There's just too much stuff for that to defend. Some banings going off on the bunker. All those Marines will get cleaned up. And moving the SCV straight into the bailings. Just so many bailings coming in. They will take out a tank and a refinery. Not a good position for Olive now. He's lost so much stuff. More Mutalists coming in. Just trying to pick off some stuff. Some Bailings morphing in as well. Pathogen glands are on the way now for Tristan as well. And Olive is really on the back foot here. He's had so many SCVs killed. If we take a look, 22 SCVs killed now by Tristan. So he's really caught up in terms of the workers killed. He's got his four bases up. So he is now a base up exactly where he wants to be. And the main of Olive is pretty much mined out. These Mutalists are just going to poke around. Some will get taken out by Marines. There's more Marines over at the third base. So these Mutalists aren't going to be too effective. But Banelings and Zergings rolling in the front. Taking out massive amounts of tanks and Marines. These Mutalists are just going to clean it up. But, I mean, there's just too much stuff for Olive, but he's taken heavy, heavy losses. I mean, Tristan may be slightly greedy with that push. I mean, this is a strong defensive position. Lots of chokes preventing the surrounds. And 
I mean, if Tristan had waited a little bit, he might have done a lot better. But getting a lot more Banelings, a lot more Zerglings. Hive also on its way now for Tristan. He's getting a lot of Infestors out. So this is really remaxing exactly how he wants to. And obviously, he's got the economy to do this. This fourth base being retaken by Olive. And that's the advantage of rebuilding these command centers and orbital commands. He's just got so much stuff. Moving those Marines forward in order to defend it. Mass cooldown of Mules will mean that the income for Olive will be comparable to that of Tristan. But Tristan taking his fifth and sixth base now so a lot of stuff coming in a sensor tower is down again we'll see those mutilists just a lot of marines there so many mules coming in and i mean this is going to be a big push for tristan he is quite heavily ahead in supply but if we take a look at the unit counting tab he is a lot of that supply is made up of workers compared to not many workers for olive but just so many banings infested terrans being chucked down to deal with those medevacs the banings are going to connect with the marines there was great splitting there but just too many banings there was about one baning for every marine more infested terrans being thrown down to try and deal with that command center these mules and scvs are being picked off by these zerglings and there's just too much stuff here i mean this third base could go down for olive as well and if this third base goes down it will not be a good position banings are moving forward but there's so many marines and a thaw there the thaw soaking up some of the damage from the banings the marines will get away safely and we'll be able to clean this up and the third base will stay up um, a, I believe that was a dropship went down, but a big move in now of a lot of Banings and Zerglings and Infestors cleaning up some Marines. The Marines rallying forward, walking straight into that line of Banelings. A tank is in position, but there's just too much stuff here for Tristan. The Infestors are going to just walk straight in. The tanks are going to be able to pick off all of those Infestors, though, before they can do anything. That's quite a big loss for Tristan. Meanwhile, Banelings just rolling in, more Zerglings coming in. This is a relentless assault on the half of Tristan. But Olive still has this good defense position, but obviously he has lost this third base. A Zergling has been burrowed, so it won't be able to land. And Tristan has got his fifth and sixth base up, although not transferring any drones yet. A drop has gone off in the main, taking out the Hive. Now, I missed that while I was watching the main attack go on for Tristan, but obviously the Hive getting sniped down is absolutely huge. It basically puts Tristan back to the Stone Ages. He does still have out this infestation bit, and the hatch will keep the creep there to keep his key units alive. But obviously he needs to get another layer up because actually his spawning pool died. He's getting a spare spawning pool. So that's always a good move. Doesn't want to lose his spawning pool because he's investing so heavily in Zerglings and Banelings. But the Spire is also down. So, I mean, Tristan really is back to the Stone Ages. And there are a lot of tanks here. They will force those Zerglings back. And the tanks are actually plus one attack. And the Zerglings only have plus one armor. So they will get one-shotted by the tanks. And some more drops going down here. This fifth base for Tristan will almost certainly get taken out. One Infestor will go down. But there is a lot of Zerglings and a great pickup by Olive there. Just really kind of trying to harass Tristan. Keep his units moving around. Not know where is safe and where isn't. Meanwhile, if we take a look at Olive's base, he's really quite low on SCV count. He's only got 31 SCVs to 56 of Tristan now obviously being that far behind economically is going to be a problem he's also only really mining off two bases compared to Tristan mining off one two three and now transferring to four so it's really a well two base Terran against a four base Zerg Tristan is obviously in a very very strong position the only advantage that Olive has is that drop killing off the hive and the spire means that Tristan is back in the stone ages with regard to tech, he can only get Banelings and Zerglings and Infestors. No Broodlords coming out for a long, long time. And obviously, Broodlords are needed to take out Siege Tank protected positions. But, I mean, there's just so much stuff here for Tristan that he's going to be able to get through. And he's taking out the key production structures. There is a lot of Infestors there. And these Zerglings just streaming in now. Going to do as much damage as they can. Getting a good surround on all of the production facilities. And this could do huge damage. Focusing down the add-ons. And also the barracks. And I mean, if some big hits go off here, all these reactors are going to go down. So this is massively hitting Olive's production. But not to matter because obviously he doesn't have the income in order, in order to support all of this. But just more marines are going to go down. There are some marines coming back, some scans going off. I mean, but the main base of Olive is getting completely annihilated. Meanwhile, the marines are going to come in and we'll be able to clean this up. And all the supply depots of Olive are going down. And he is now supply blocked quite heavily. And, I mean, that's not a good position to be in, being so far supply blocked. But not for long, because just so many Marines are being killed by all of these Zerglings. And, I mean, this all, entire production base of Olive is going to go, and there is the GG. What a fantastic game. I hope you enjoyed watching that. I love casting. That was brilliant. 
If you did enjoy it, please follow me on Twitter for all updates of my latest games and when they are cast. It is at SC2 underscore England and subscribe to my YouTube channel. So thank you for watching and tune in again.